10. Welcome to First and 10. We're here from Chickie and Pete's in the morning. Chickie and Pete's in Marlton, Mark Narducci, Phil Anastasia. We're going to be talking high school football for the next hour. We're going to have two teams here, Lenape and Delran. And Phil, before we get started, we're almost nearing the midway point of the South Jersey season. It's very exciting, Mark. You know, it's been another great year. And, uh, you know, it's kind of crunch time. You see uh, the coaches, the players kind of realize every game takes on a little bit more importance. Everybody angling for playoff bursts and conference and division titles. So this really is the best part of the year. We're heading into real exciting football, I think, in November. And for some teams in December as well. Now, one of our colleagues is Kevin Emmons. He'll be joining us later on, but now he's out with the football player. What's up, guys? Kevin Emmons here at Chickies and Pete's. I'm here with over 30 players from both Delran and Lenape. Delran picked up a WJFL Patriot Division win over Ewing. Lenape is enjoying the day, the day off. However, we are here today, early, bright Saturday morning, where both teams will be enjoying some free food. So over here, I got Clyde Washington from Lenape, and I got Sam Brogan over here from Delran. Both are out here enjoying the free food. So, Clyde, you know, free food's always fun. What's yeah. it like? What do you plan on eating? Um, it looks like we have uh, some pancake sausage and eggs. Um, who doesn't love free food? I was here last year with uh, Shawnee, had an amazing time with the guys. And um, it was, it was Chicken's Pizza Fry, one of the best places to go, um, best fries I ever tasted. And uh, Sam, I mean, you're a lineman, so you always got to, you know, stay eating, be ready out there to block for your guys, you know. What do you think of this free food? Uh, you know, I'm a big boy, so I like to eat. I'm just ready to feast, to be honest. And today on the menu, we have eggs, we have sausage, we have apple juice and orange juice, and we even have some Krabby Tots, Chickies and Pete's own little twist on tater tots. And we would like to thank the TD Bank our Community Outreach Program for feeding all of these players, and of course, Chickies and Pete's for providing this great food. And what exactly do you plan on eating? Are you going to eat everything? I'm a host, so, you know, I'm, I'm a big boy, you got to eat, you know, I'm very hungry right now. So. A little bit of everything, you're going to try to set like a personal record for pancakes or something? No, I, I think my lineman got that. I mean, uh, I, I do eat a lot, but my lineman got that, definitely. How about you? Any uh, any uh, records you're looking to break here? Uh, I'm going to get everything and then go back maybe once or twice, maybe even three times, honestly. All right, well, hopefully they save some for us, too. Back to you guys. And thank you very much, Kevin. Uh, we'll be seeing Kevin a little bit later on in the show. Also, thanks to TD Bank's community outreach program. That enables us to bring these players here and, and have a great time here at Chickie and Pete's. Well, I'll tell you what, Phil, as we talk about Friday night's games, uh, Woodrow Wilson had a great time. I, not stunning that they won 48 nothing over Shawnee margin of victory and I think the ease with which they were able to control that game Mark really was stunning in a lot of ways. I had been at Wilson last year, Shawnee at Wilson last year and that was a game went right down to the very end. I kind of expected to see the same thing uh, but Wilson just totally dominated the game. Fidel Diggs, the uh, you know the big rangy defensive end and wide receiver 172 yards receiving three touchdown catches um, Devin Clark in five touchdown passes. Mohim McCargo, who I think is a little bit of an underrated player. He's one of the better players in all of South Jersey, Mark. Yeah. He had another big game. So really a dominating, kind of a statement performance for the Tigers going into Medford. Uh, and just dominating 48 to nothing. You, you know, Phil, you talk about Clarkman. He's only a sophomore. What a bunch of sophomore quarterbacks. Uh, I saw one last night, Donovan Leary uh, from, from Timber Creek as uh, the Chargers defeated uh, Millville. I don't know if I remember having this kind of young quarterbacks around South Jersey. And you, and you know what's interesting, Mark, is both of those guys are the younger brothers yeah. of record-setting quarterbacks that kind of dominated the scene the previous two se seasons. Last year, Nick Cargman from Woodrow Wilson yeah. sets a state record for uh, passing yards state record for yards in a game and then of course the season before Devin Leary from Timber Creek sets the state record for career touchdowns and career um, yardage so I guess both of these guys kind of looked up to their brothers following in their in their brothers footsteps and I'll tell you it's early but both of them I think have a chance to take a real run at their brothers records yeah and that's saying something by the way Tarheeb still the Maryland recruit for Timber Creek 
just a monster as a receiver. Uh, had, a, had a touchdown on a long go route at the end of the half. One of the, Obviously one of the better players in South Jersey. Phil, one of the other developments, we'll go to group two. West Stepford and Haddonfield, that's one of the great, great um, rivalries in South Jersey. West Stepford won 28-14, maybe not even that close. Well, they were up 28 nothing, so I think they had control of the game. Yeah. Gavin Shields, their, uh, you know, their all-purpose -pur senior, scored on a run and also had a strip sack, scoop and uh, score with that. So big plays from him. They're up 28 nothing, so they kind of controlled that game. Haddonfield with two touchdowns in the fourth quarter made it competitive. Interesting thing about those two, Mark, is inevitably they play again in the playoffs. They've, they've met twice, you know, probably eight in the last ten years. Um, so I wouldn't be surprised to see them meet again. But right now, in terms of the division and in terms of seeding, uh, West Everett has the upper hand at this point in the season. Yeah, I think Group 2 is, is going to be interesting because I, I – I think Haddonfield is going to keep improving. You know, that's a team that uh, lost 21 seniors to graduation. So I think by the end of the season, this is going to be an improved team. We have a team with us here tonight, Del Rand, who, you know, could factor in. We have Camden. I think Group 2 is going to be pretty interesting. Cedar Creek, Cedar another Creek. team you really got to watch. who went toe-to-toe -to -toe with both Camden and Wilson. You know, actually won mm -hmm. one of those games yeah. by one and lost one by one. So yeah. another team to watch. No yeah. question, Mark. Group two, almost always group two is loaded, um, and I think it will be again this year. At this point in the season, and again, we're in the middle of October, so a long way to go. Yeah. West Everett looks like the best team to me, but a lot can change between now and playoff time, that's for sure. Yeah. Phil, there's some couple of real key games coming up this right. week, and, uh, you know, we talk about Shawnee. Now they have to go to a Union City team that's 3-3 three and three, but has played, played a very, very tough schedule. Well, they're a group five power up yeah. there, so there's no question that they're going to be battle-tested. Tough team. You know, Shawnee coming off a tough loss, obviously, and have to travel pretty far up the turnpike to get to Union City. And they're playing in one of the most unique stadiums in the entire country, Mark. Yeah. Union City's football field on top of the school, surrounded by a huge fence. So be a unique experience for the Renegades to go up there to play in that game. But certainly it's going to be a competitive game as well on the field. It'll be interesting to see if the Renegades can bounce back from what had to be a very, very uh, disappointing performance on Friday night. Yeah, now you have uh, St. Saint Joseph, which has to play Vineland today, goes up against West Stepford, and St. Joe won't lack any motivation in that one. That's the game I really think I'm really looking forward to next week because I, yeah. you know, I was there last year, St. Joe going through a lot of uh, turmoil at the time. Uh, veteran coach Paul Sacco, the, the all-time leader in, in, in career yeah. wins in South Jersey, suspended for that game. Uh, West Effort comes in to build Bendick Field and beats St. Joe 51 to nothing, Mark. Yeah. It was just, it was kind of surreal, actually. Yeah. Um, St. Joe remembers that game, and they certainly remember... Um, you know, what it felt like to walk off the field after losing 51 nothing. So, like you said, they got to play Vineland today, got to take care of business in that game. Uh, but I know there would be a tremendous amount of motivation uh, for the Wildcats going into that game. And as we mentioned earlier, West Effort playing very well and another opportunity for the Eagles under, you know, Coach Jason Morrell to kind of really establish their bona fides. If they can beat St. Joe two years in a row, I'd really be saying something about that program. And, and you know, with Jada Byers and Ahmad Ross, I, I don't know if there's a better pair of backs in South Jersey. There's no question it's going to be very difficult for West yeah. Ever to contain them. Yeah. But again, the Eagles, you know, they, they're playing very well. Defense has been tough. And they're, they're winged. It's interesting. It's a match of two winged T teams. So, uh, you know, should move along pretty quickly. I don't know there's going to be a whole lot of passing, although St. Joe has passed a little bit more this year. But I'm really looking forward to that game, Mark. I think that could be one of the better matchups, you know, of the entire season. Yeah, there's no question about it. Well, we have a lot more coming up when we return here at First and Ten from Chickie and Pete's in Marlton. We'll be talking to the Lenape team, Coach Joe Wojciechowski, Lyman, Owen Hartman, and more when we return right here on First and Ten. To let them know that we stand behind them, wherever they are. What does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? 
what does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done. Once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews, and more. Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. Casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches. Solid rock. And everything in between. Now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Well, as you can see, this is Saturday morning. You have a lot of hungry football players here from Lenape and Delran. We're at Chickie and Pete's in Marlton, and they're really enjoying their breakfast, and I hope they save some for us, uh, Phil, when the show uh, gets over. But right now, we have uh, two people from the Lenape football program. To my right, Coach Joe Wojciechowski. To my left, center Owen Hartman. And... Uh, the Lenape Indians, one of the top teams in South Jersey with a 4-1 record, have a bye this week. Coach, you have to be pretty happy. I mean, you had an, out an outstanding win earlier this year over St. Augustine. Uh, down to the wire, lost to one of the best teams in South Jersey, Williamstown. How do you feel about your team at this point? You know, going into the season, I thought there was there was a couple question marks uh, on how we would respond, how we would fill a couple different spots. Um, but these kids uh, did, did such a great job preparing themselves for the season, um, and we're sitting at four and one. It's where we want to be. Uh, we, you know, the St. Augustine win was a huge win for our program, a uh, huge win for our team, and, and it set kind of the path and set the tone for the, where we are right now. So, uh, very thrilled to be a four and one football team. Well, it's last year was an interesting year for you. Your first year, team coming off, you know, a tremendous season before winning a sectional title played the tough schedule the whole theme last year seemed to be we got some young guys we're getting some experience we're going to be battle tested it's going to pay off in the future you're are you seeing that absolutely these guys don't blink uh, they love the big moments they love the big games um, and and they're very very experienced and we have some juniors right now that are, are well experienced more uh, more so than m many other programs so uh, you know, these guys have done a great job, and uh, yeah, they, they, they just don't blink in the big moments. Owen, uh, you're enjoying your recruiting a little bit. We understand Johns Hopkins, some Patriot League teams. How has that been? And, and also, these are kind of schools that recruit players that have done the job in the classroom, and you've really done that. Uh, I mean, uh, during the season, I like to focus on high school football, but at the same time, I mean, we're in the bye week. I was able to talk to some schools this week and just see where I stand in the recruitment process. and. I mean, it's just a, it is a blessing to be, you know, able to play at the next level because I, I love playing football, I love playing the game. I've only been playing for four years, and I just I want to play for four more for sure. So you're taking three AP courses too. You have quite an academic load. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, this year, senior year, I, I, it is, 
challenge, but I mean, to me, it just uh, feels like just another uh, year for me. I mean, the, what I've taken in high school so far, I mean, uh, I'm enjoying my classes. I have a lot of friends in my class this year, which is new, and uh, I mean, I just, I just love being at Lenape. Coach, tell us a little bit about Owen, you know, guy, program player, has been through the program, worked himself up, obviously a tremendous student, team leader. Talk a little bit about what he means to your program. Um, you know, coincidentally enough, I got to present him uh, at the Brooks Irvine Scholar Athlete uh, Award Banquet this Monday, and I can't speak highly enough about Owen and what he has done for our program as a leader in the offseason. Uh, he really fit that role perfectly. He's an extension of our coaching staff, um, and then, you know, what he does on the field. I mean, this guy is going against some of the better talent in South Jersey, around our area, and he's making plays, moving moving it. Um, he's the quarterback of our offensive line. He makes every call uh, on our offensive line. So to have a guy like that that understands what we want to do, when we want to do it, and why we want to do it is super important. Again, he, I mean, he's a tremendous student. Uh, he's a freak show in the classroom. Um, just, just an excellent young man, phenomenal leader. Uh, I'm blessed to have him on our program. You know, as great a student as you are, you've had a great year blocking. What's it like blocking for some of these backs you have here at Lenneby? you got Xavier Coleman. You know, that guy can go coast to coast on any play. You have some real talented guys to block for. I mean, Hamza and X, I mean, they're just two really talented guys. They're best friends. It's really cool because, I mean, you'd think if we have two really talented backs, they'd really want the ball. But, you know, they both are really happy when both of them are, you know, being successful. What has he meant to your team? Uh, he, he's been extremely dominant uh, th this year, just reading, flowing, filling holes. Uh, he leads our teams with tackles for a loss and tackles. Um, we were able to put him at the linebacker position, but then on third and longs, we're able to move him up to the defensive end spot and let him rush a passer because he's a natural passer. So he uses that length so well. Um, to have a guy that's you know, 6'3", 220 pounds on your defense making plays it, it is super important. Makes Especially, you look like a good defensive yeah, coach. Yeah, right? Yeah, he makes you look good a lot. <laughs> Hey, uh, we talk about Clyde Washington. You ever have to block him in, in practice? So actually, yeah, every Wednesday we do something called the gauntlet, which is during our defensive individual periods. And I'm an offensive only guy, but I, I live for the gauntlet on Wednesdays because I get because all week, you know, you go against each other in scout because I play scout, I play scout yeah. offense against the team D, and I don't really have the guys next to me that I'm used to. But when it's just a one on one, and I'm able to go against guys like, I mean, we have Jake Silver. We have uh, Dom and Mark and Clyde, and it's just fun to go against these guys because, I mean, we play with them on Friday nights, and the other guys got to deal with them then, but I want to challenge myself during the week, so I'm ready to go, too. I'll tell you what, it doesn't look so fun when you see them on film. No, but it definitely gets me better. Clyde, Clyde's gotten me a bit this year, but, I mean, it's only going to get me better. I don't really think I'm going to see a talent like that for a long time after this. Well, what you guys have a, a bye this week. You know, a bye can be a good time any time in a season if you make the most of it. What do you think about the bye being this week, and how are you guys kind of dealing with it, you know, maybe healing some bumps and bruises and kind of setting yourself up for the run later in the season? Absolutely. Uh, I think it's perfect time, you know, five games in. Guys are going to have those bumps and bruises that need to heal up, and, and our focus this week was to rest the bodies but also get better. Um, you know, you, we can't stay complacent. Let's get a little bit better at what we do. Let's get better at executing our stuff, not focusing on any opponent, just focusing on Lenape right now. And, and I think we did that. I, I think we had a great week of practice. I thought we had a great week of focus. Guys were competitive. Um, so I, I thought the bye week went very well. You know, Owen, last year you guys went five and six. You were hit hard by graduation. Still went five and six. Made the playoffs against what I thought was one of the toughest schedules in South Jersey. How much did that experience help you for this year uh, when you're also playing one of the better schedules in South Jersey? I mean, last year was really helpful, but if I'm going to be honest with you, my sophomore year probably was the biggest effect on our team this year because the guys in our locker room that were there when we were sophomores were able to see how a real championship football team functions and then we were able to try to start building that culture last year and work into what we want to do this year and that's definitely helped us because that 2017 was really special. Well, you stepped in for one of the famous coaches in South Jersey history, Timmy, Timmy McEnany, took over a program, obviously was one of the best around. What's it been like for you? Has it been what you expected it to be? Uh, you know, Yes and no. You, you're never really ready for things until they're, they're in your face. Um, but taking over from for Tim, uh, you know, it was pretty special for me. It's a guy I want to emulate. It's a guy I admire, a guy I played for, um, and, and somebody I have a great relationship with till this day. We probably speak four or five times a week uh, still. Um, you know, he's a football junkie uh, himself. So taking over him from was really, really special. Um, it's been a it's been an experience. Definitely, first year was first year was tough. Just kind of 
learning the ins and outs of running a program, not necessarily a football team, but a football program. Um, this year has been much, much smoother, um, but it's been, it's been, it's been a challenge, a challenge I've enjoyed for sure. All right. Well, uh, Coach Wojciechowski, uh, Owen Hartman, thank you very much for joining us. We'll see you guys back a little bit later in the show. Up next here from Chickie and Pete's in Marlton, it'll be the Delran team. Coach Garrett Lucas, running back, safety, all-around player, R.J. Moten. We'll be back right here on First and Ten. To let them know that we stand behind them, wherever they are. What does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews, and more. Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Hip and pop. Casinos by the ocean. Hip and pop. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches. Solid rock. And everything in between. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Isn't that and there are some real hungry Delran football players, and they should be. They had such a big win last night over Ewing, and they're having a good time here at Chickie and Pete's. Mark Narducci, Phil Anastasia. We're now here with the Delran team. Uh, to my right, head coach Garrett Lucas. To my left here, R.J. Moten, one of the top players in the state who is committed to the University of Michigan. How about that, going to Michigan, making that choice? You did it in the preseason, so I guess you feel a little relieved now. I do, I do. I mean, to be able to go in my senior season, you know, with no more stress on my shoulders and just be able to be there for my team and be able to push my teammates is something, you know, like I'll always remember now you're a two-sport guy. You're, you're an outstanding baseball player, and you, you plan on doing both there. For sure, yeah. I talked to uh, Coach Harbaugh when I went out there, and Coach Pete, my safeties coach, and you know, they really had never had no problem. I know there's kid, there's a commit in my grade, a running back. He'll be uh, wrestling, and I remember um, before I called Coach Lucas, I committed sitting in the Coach Harbaugh's office, and I was just like, "How do you feel about you know me playing baseball?" And he went back into his room and pulled out a bat and started swinging it, and I was like, I mean, I guess it's a, I guess it's a yes, so, but yeah, I'll be playing uh, football and baseball. Well, what about, how was, what was recruiting like, and did you ever count up how many scholarship offers you got? Yeah, I, I mean, I ended up with, I want to say 30 offers, and I mean, you could even ask Coach Lucas, there'd be times I would only go to school, I would go to school, but I'd only actually be in a class for at least like one period at, at most. I mean, I remember there, there was a line, like all humbleness, there was a line, but, but yeah, it, it got crazy at it sometimes. 
But you enjoyed it, right? You enjoyed yeah. the process? Oh, yeah. I, it was a blessing. It was a true blessing. Yeah. Garrett, everybody in the state knows the name R.J. Moten, but you're with him every day. Talk a little bit about what he means to your program, what it's been like to coach a young man like that. Uh, he means everything. He's truly one of those guys that he'll come around once in a lifetime. Just the way that he is, he conducts himself on the field, off the field, in the classroom, in the community. Uh, it's awesome to see how young players look up to him. Even our uh, freshmen and sophomores, they want to be like RJ. You know, little kids, they'll come to, even if it's a basketball game, and say, where's RJ? Like, ah, he doesn't play basketball, but, you know, they always want to see him be around him. And uh, just the way that he carries himself, and it's from his mother, Pat, and his father, Ron, that the way they raised him is the way that he is today. And you talked a little bit before we went on air. He's having another great year, but he hasn't quite been 100%. What's happened, and, and do you see him you know, be able to have even more of an impact moving forward here? Absolutely. Uh, week two, he took a helmet right to his uh, left ankle, and that thing swelled up like a softball. But uh, the competitor he is, he said, no, nah, I'm still going to play defense at least. And the uh, following week, he had two interceptions. But then just even this past game last night, he caught a touchdown, ran for a touchdown. And so it's nice to see number four back on offense. Hey, RJ, I'd be remiss if I didn't mention baseball. You were part of the Burlington County Carpenter for Cup sure. team. For sure. You win it all sure. at, at, at the Carpenter Cup at Citizens Bank Park. What was that experience like? I mean, it, 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 it's a dream come true. You know, I know people ask me, you know, how, like, are you going to go NFL or MLB? But if I go NFL, I'll be able to say, you know, I played on an MLB, uh, MLB stadium. But I mean, just the competitiveness uh, that was surrounding my Carpenter Cup team, we, we just knew we, what we had to do. I remember you hit a big triple to start off in, in the semifinal win. You got from first to third. You looked like a running back on that. Yeah. How about that memory? I mean, it, it, that'll always be, that'll always be, you know, it, it'll always be stuck in my brain. But I just remember, I, I can always hear my mom. So, I mean, I guess I was doing like something good when I hit that ball. Gary, you guys came into this season with high expectations after a great year last year. You lose the opener to your rival, Cinnamons, in a game I'm sure you guys want to have back. But the team has been able to respond from that win five in a row. How were they able to sort of put that loss behind them and move forward and say, you know what, we still can accomplish everything we want to accomplish this season? Uh, you know, our motto, as always, is take it one week at a time. And, you know, it, things didn't work out at Cinnamons in the way that we wanted to. But the way that we've been able to respond and the kids are starting to understand and buy into the culture and buy into the system of, you know, plucking away, take one play at a time and good things will happen. And that's what these young men are able to do. And, you know, thankfully, we have been able to get those five wins in a row. Everybody knows RJ, some of your other seniors, but you guys got a sophomore who's making an impact. Tell us a little bit about him. Oh, uh, yeah. Kenny Fletcher, he's uh, 6'4", 210 pounds. Uh, last night, he had five sacks, a safety, a forced fumble. Uh, the size of his hands for a sophomore is incredible. And, you know, his get off, he's so raw to defensive end because naturally, you see a tall athlete, a wide receiver, they want to put him at D back or safety. And, you know, we converted him as a defensive end this past summer, and he loves it and he eats it up. I think right now he was about third in the state in sacks, and after a five sack performance, pretty sure he'll go up. Hey, RJ, um, give us a little scouting report on the rest of this Delran team. I mean, people mention you all the time, but you guys have gotten a lot of contributions from a lot of people, as Coach just mentioned. Yeah. Well, first I want to start out with the line. Line, uh, we have starting line is just, you know, one senior, but then it's all juniors. And the, the bond that they have, you know, week one we lost another senior, and the way that they came and especially this kid, JR, fill, uh, filling in for the hurt, uh, Silas Frere who got hurt. But, um, you know, the bond that they have is just something special. I know if they keep it up, then we'll feed off of that. But in the in the skills positions, you know, we got a quarterback, Dustin Desser. Um, he was hurt his sophomore year, but being able to come back, you know, junior, senior year and do his thing. Um, we got wide receivers, Mikel House, uh, second fastest kid in the state. I'm sure he's either the fastest or second fastest one of them. Uh, Jack Benson, who's another wide receiver. Nyon Barnes, another wide receiver. And, we've, and, and, and what's been special about us is we've all been playing like our whole lives together. So, I mean, to be able to, you know, to have this as our last year and keep doing what we're doing is really something special. Karen, one of the things we talked about before we came on the air was how strong Group 2 is again this year. Last year, you guys had a great record. Didn't get in because of the PowerPoint system, which since has been changed. And again, you're kind of angling for a spot in the Group 2 playoffs. I know you don't want to look too far ahead, 
but how much are you guys looking forward to maybe winning a few more games, getting yourself in position to maybe make some noise in the postseason? Yeah, absolutely. We'll take it one week at a time, but I am I know these guys are very, very eager to get in and then make some noise. That it doesn't matter who we play. We're gonna be grateful to be in that situation and you know handle it to hopefully make a run and show, you know, South Jersey that, you know, Delran football trying to put them back on the map. Well, Coach uh, Lucas, thank you very much. RJ, thank you very much. Great having uh, Delran here at Chickie and Pete's. They'll be back a little bit later on the show, but when we come back, we'll have our colleague Kevin Evans and also the former Lenape coach, Tim McEnany. He's seen a few South Jersey high school teams. That much more when we return from Chickie and Pete's right here on First and Ten. To let them know that we stand behind them wherever they are. What does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews, and more. Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856-226-4800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Casinos by the ocean. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches. Solid rock. And everything in between. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Isn't that? And welcome back as you're getting a good look at both teams eating breakfast here, eggs, sausage, pancakes, and more at Chickie and Pete's, Delran and Lenape having a good time as are we here on First and Ten with us in this segment. And also we have to thank TD Bank the community outreach program for being able to bring both of these teams here and feed them a great breakfast. Tim McEnany, the former head coach at Lenape with us. Also our colleague, Kevin Emmons. And Kevin, uh, you've seen a lot of the top teams in South Jersey. Who's the top team you've seen so far? So far, I would have to say Williamstown. I think most people would agree. Um, I've seen them earlier this year in that battle they had with Lenape. And I actually seen them a lot last year when they won the South Jersey Group 5 title. And the thing that's really impressive with them is obviously, you know, the Braves are known for their defense, but it's the contributions they get from other guys. Guys, names you haven't really heard before who really made a name for themselves, you know, throughout the course of the season. And, you know, they continue to be very impressive on the defensive end. They're not giving up a lot of points. Um, Dougie Brown stepping in as quarterback this year, and he's really, you know, racking up some yards. And, you know, last year, as I said, they won the South Jersey Group 5 title. But that was a team that you really knew for running the ball and stuff like that. And they're getting it going both ways now in the offensive end. So, as of right now, I think that's the best team in South Jersey. Tim, great to have you here with us. All South Jersey this morning buzzing about Woodrow Wilson's yep. big victory 
over Shawnee last night. You were there. Tell us a little bit about that game. Um, it was wow. I mean, it was a wow game. I mean, Fidel Diggs and crew. It, it, Wilson dominated from the opening kickoff. Um, you know, offensively, they, they, they handled them um, with both wings. I mean, close to 600 yards total offense. Uh, whew, Cardman had close to 300 in the air. And then the combination of over 250 yards on the ground. I mean, when, when Wilson's doing both of those things, I mean, heck, when any team's doing both things that well, that's scary. Uh, Diggs is just, I, he's, I don't want to say unstoppable, but last night he was. He, he's a tough player. And they got a lot, a lot of other compliment players as well. So Wilson Wilson had it all going on last night. Yeah, you, know, sure. you, talk, you talk about compliment players, and I don't know if this guy deserves that designation because he's a star in his own right, but Mohim McCarthy is sorry. a guy, you know, when you think of Wilson, you think of trying to stop that passing attack, but if you drop eight back and don't and don't really fill that box, they'll gash you with the run, and he's a guy who can do it. Yeah, and we were talking about it before the game, and so, and uh, to your point, you got a guy like McCargo, and you're saying, I, I always thought if Wilson was going to run the ball 20-plus times, I thought they were going to end up on the good side of the win. Did I think 48 nothing? No. Um, I think you got an A-plus game out of Wilson. I don't think you got an A game out of Shawnee. I think Shawnee, if you ask their coaching staff, absolutely did not play up to expectations. But McCargo, he was tough. Later. He runs hard and angry. And there's a, there, you got to bring some guys to the table to get him on the ground. And, and that, to your point, Phil, closes the box down. You got, what do you do? You put eight and a half, nine, you can't put nine. You got digs, you got 12, you got 14, you got a lot of guys who can hurt you on the outside and Cargan will find them. Yeah, and Diggs, of course, 6'5", 225. He's headed for Texas A&M. Well, let's get a look at the Inquirer South Jersey football top 10. There will be no change at number one, where Williamstown is number one. But Kevin, Shawnee, I mean, obviously has to drop with, with that loss to uh, Woodrow Wilson. You've seen Shawnee, though. This is a pretty talented team Tim Gashu has. Yes, it is. And this is a team that, you know, we had on the show earlier yeah. this year. They brought back a lot of guys on their defense. They're playing very well, you know, very competitive. And Shawnee and Williamstown is a matchup that's coming up soon in the next couple weeks. And that will be a good matchup with two defenses. But as you say, you know, guys like Dolan Short and uh, – Don Fregola and stuff like that. Their defense is playing very well. Uh, something that really impressed me with them also is on the offensive end, when they run the ball, they kind of have like a running back committee. It's not just one clear cut back with uh, Jake Barnett and Jalen Horsley and uh, Tom Rebstock. They're able to get going and you know keep guys fresh and stuff like that. And that's really what gets their offense going. But that's a team where if they can get going early with the run game and their defense stays in it, they're going to be competitive every game. Tim, you've been on, you know, you coach for quite a while, and you've been on a few, not many, uh, experiences like Timmy Gashu is going through right now, where you've had a tough loss, you got to try to get the guys back together, you got to bounce back. they got a big game this week at Union City. Absolutely. What do you think Timmy and his assistant's message is to his kid after, you know, his kids, after what was, what was such a difficult night last night? Well, that's, I think that's a game you throw out the film. Uh, it's not, you know, who you are on tape at that game probably is not who they are as a program. Um, you know, is it they never had good field position the whole game, but what what you do is you, you know you got to just look at internally at yourself and your program and say what do we need to do right? I mean it comes back to you know the old let's block, let's tackle, let's get guys on the ground, let's let's play fundamental hard nosed football. And look, Gus has done it a long time, you know. And and look, we've all been on. I talked to a guy on the staff last night walking by Tony Escudero. I, we've all been on both sides of that. You know, we've been in those times where. Our team could do no wrong, and we've been on sides where like, we, we felt like we hadn't practiced in two weeks. And, and you know, they're high school kids. You know, there's a lot of things going on, a lot of variables that happen. But, but the program, as we talk about, and that, that is a program that w this will, you know, make them stronger uh, because they're, they're, to a man, they're not happy of what happened. And, you know, it's it's an unacceptable performance from Shawnee, and they'll, they'll, every coach and every player will tell you that. So, it's about now. Let's get better at Shawnee football, and that's I'm sure that's the mantra that's going to take place this week. Well, what's interesting is you know they had a difficult year last year. They go into playoffs two and six, and they end up winning a sectional title. So these are coaches, these are kids who dealt with adversity in the right way. So you got to believe they're going to do it again. Yeah, they they were losing games early last year, and they still never gave up their season. You know, this year, hey, we always talk about as a staff, sometimes sometimes it's good to get punched in the mouth. You know, I mean, nobody likes to lose, and nobody yeah. says there's such things as good losses. 
But these, some of these teams start, and I'm not saying Shawnee was doing this, but you start thinking, hey, you're maybe a little better than you are. Let's go, let's get back to the drawing board now, right? Let's see, you know, you know, we used to say, hey, no positions are guaranteed at all. You know, these aren't contracted situations here. Let's go out and earn them every week. And I'm sure Shawnee's going to be in that, that aspect of, and going on the road this week to Union City. You know, you know, in the Inquirer top ten, you have uh, Lenape at number three, St. Augustine at number four, St. Joe at five. Lenape beat St. Augustine. St. Augustine beat St. Joe. You've seen Lenape. How about your thoughts on the Indians? Well, I was very impressed when I seen Lenape earlier this year. Uh, I seen them when they battled Williamstown, and yeah. at the time, the two top teams in South Jersey. Yeah. And Lenape was up in that game, thirteen nothing at halftime. I mean, that's been unheard of in South Jersey for us to see Williamstown, you know, allow thirteen points, let alone in one half. And, you know, yeah. traditionally from what I've seen, you know, Lennon P likes to get going early with the run and stuff like that. And this year, you know, they're attacking with the pass. You know, Brady Long had a had a big half. Connor Kenny had a huge game that game. Six receptions, 86 yards, two touchdowns. And as I said, that's just unheard of against a very good uh, Williamstown defense. Um, obviously, you know, a heartbreaking loss for Lennon P, but I think that was a good experience for them. You know, they really learned a lot from that. And that's going to help them moving forward. And that's a, that's a matchup we could, you know, potentially see in the South Jersey Blue 5 semifinal championship. So I think that's a that's a good experience, as I said, for them. And Lenape is going to keep uh, pounding, pushing forward. Tim, talk a little bit about Lenape. You know, I remember when, when you, you know, you decided to step away and, and Woods got the job. You were very excited and, and optimistic about what he would be able to do. Young, young guy, especially, you know, compared to you and I, young, <laughs> young guy, but he's done a tremendous job, you know, maintaining the level of the program that you and your assistants were able to establish. Talk a little bit about how excited you are about what Woj has done there. Well, I, I've known, I've known Coach Woj since he was uh, 14 years old. I got a chance to coach him on two championship teams at, at uh, Holy Cross. He was an instrumental part of those, that program and, and the captain of that team. I mean, little character on Joe, Coach Woj. We asked him, he was a linebacker for his junior year, didn't play any offense, and was by trade a tight end fullback. And we needed, we needed him to play guard uh, his senior year. And he said, Coach, whatever you need me to do, let's go do it. And you know, things like that as a young kid, and then goes on two time captain at Widener as a championship program there, coming on and as a, joining our staff in 2012, having a, a burst of energy, uh, you know, assisting myself and Coach Henny on the defensive side of the ball. And, and having those things of relating to the kids being a little bit younger, but understanding program-wise, being a part of Holy Cross, being a part of Widener, and understanding what it takes to win football games. You know, Woj comes in, calling the defense in 16 and 17 for us, and you could see him making decisions on both sides of the ball, tactically, how things were going. So, not a surprise to me. He's an intense guy. Kids love playing for him. I love coaching with him. Um, I'm excited for them in the Lenape program. So it's, it's great to have Woj and, and company, the staff having together and you know going on and doing the things they're doing this year. Absolutely. Well, I'll tell you, as you see, we're being surrounded by the players of both teams. When we return here on Chickie and Pete in Marlton, we're going to have both coaches back, uh, Garrett Lucas and Joe Wojciechowski. Stay with us as we return here from Chickie and Pete's on First and Ten. To let them know that we stand behind them, wherever they are. What does it take to bridge the distance and keep them connected to family, home, and country? And what does it take to prepare them for their future when their service to the nation is complete? What does it take to strengthen our service members so they can be the greatest force for good in the world? It takes a force. Be a force behind the forces. Share a message today at force.uso.org. I want to be a contender. I want a warm belly to sleep on. A big house. How do I look? Do, do I look good? I want to play hard. My nails done once a month. I want. I want. I want a home. I just want a home. I want someone to love. Last year, more than 30,000 companion animals came to us without homes. 20,000 of them were felines. Let's make some homes together. Add us on social media to watch bloopers, behind the scenes footage, previews, and more.
Choosing Medicare coverage can be a very confusing and complicated process. Help is just a phone call away, 856-226-4800. As a licensed insurance agent, I'll assist you in making an informed and confident decision on a Medicare plan that meets your needs, lifestyle, and budget. Call me today for a free, no obligation, Medicare benefits consultation, 856 226 4,800. Boardwalks built for fun. Legendary rock and roll clubs. This is how we do it. Hip and pop. Casinos by the ocean. Hip and pop. Now that's New Jersey. 130 miles of beautiful beaches. Solid rock and everything in between. Look in the window. <laughs> now that's New Jersey. Burlington County College. Is now Welcome back. Welcome back to Chickie and Pete's here in Marlton. There's a lot of excitement here with the Delran and the Lenape uh, programs. Joe Wojciechowski, the head coach. Garrett Lucas, the head coach. Sean Tice behind me, uh, two-way lineman. You having a good time here? Yes, sir. Hey, what about this Delran team? How excited are you? Five and one? Yeah, it's, it's going great. We're having a great season. We're going to keep working hard, and uh, everything should go good for us. All right. Yeah. Hey, Coach, what, what people don't know about you is you are a big old offensive lineman at college at St. Francis. You told me you weighed over 300 pounds. Yeah, I used to be uh, 320 pounds. I was a center and a left guard. You look like a quarterback and, now. Uh, I don't think my receivers would say that. <laughs> no. Hey, uh, one other thing. Your team played against Carson Wentz's team. Tell us about that in college. Uh, yeah, my redshirt sophomore year went out to the Fargo Dome, uh, put up 14 points, and they put up 56 unanswered. So that's he is who he is for a reason. But he didn't play that he much, right? No. He was a freshman. Yeah, he was, he was a freshman. Brock Jensen played, and uh, – yeah, they lit us up. <laughs> <laughs> Mojo, I want to ask you a little bit. You know, everybody watches of high school football. They know Friday night at the games. They know you guys are practicing all, during the week. But there's a lot, a lot of other stuff involved in a program. How important is it to your guys to get together a day like this and maybe kind of enjoy this camaraderie? You know, these are the things that we, we talk about all the time as a program and, and bringing in that family aspect, that, that loving each other, spending time with each other. So being given an opportunity to do things like this is just another one of those opportunities to come together, enjoy each other's company, spend time with each other, share a meal together. Those are the special moments that these kids remember. Garrett, this is your second year as a head coach. You're a young head coach. How are you enjoying it? You're, te you're teaching history as well. How are you enjoying your time here? Uh, through things like this. Uh, coach Woj put it perfectly. We've spent the past two summers actually going to Lenape for our seven on seven. So a lot of these guys okay. see each other all the time. So it's more going to be more perfect that we're with each other here today. But it's small things, building a team, building a culture. Coach Woj can attest to this that, uh, you know, it's these little strives that kind of put forth to make that progress. Well, you know, everybody knows the high school football nowadays is 12 month jobs. A lot of these guys working all 12 months. But here we are in the middle of October, everybody kind of looking forward to the second half of the season. How much are you guys looking forward to, you know, kind of pushing forward and maybe doing some special stuff in November and maybe even December? You know, that's the thing we preach all the time. There's there's four seasons, there's preseason. Uh, I'm sorry, there's off season, there's preseason, there's in season, and there's postseason. Now, what you do in those first three seasons kind of contributes to that, that fourth season. And, and, and that's what we do it for. Look, we work all year long. It's a 12-month job. And these guys want to win, they want to compete, and they want to play on a big stage. Um, so we're gearing up for that, that next stage, and, and we're excited to do it. Well, we want to thank everybody here. Also, thank our friends at TD Bank, the community outreach program. They make it possible that we bring these teams here to Chickie and Pete's. Thanks to Joe Wojciechowski, Owen Hartman. Thanks to Garrett Lucas and the Del Ram team. For Phil Anastasia, Mark Narducci saying, have a great week, everybody, and enjoy yourself here from Chickie and Pete's.